Terry Shodin is the principal and founder of Shodin Communications, a public speaking, sales training, and consulting firm based in Newport Beach, California. She is a nationally recognized and award-winning speaker who has specialized in helping people build and deliver more polished, persuasive, and effective presentations for over 20 years. She is the author of five books, including Scrappy and the New York Times bestseller, Small Message, Big Impact. Terry is a frequent guest on radio and television talk shows throughout the country, appearing on The Today Show. Bloomberg, CNN, CNBC, and more. We're all looking for that perfect spot on gesture. That's that combination of savvy and smart and clever that will help us to stand out. A trade show is a perfect opportunity to craft an engaging three-minute elevator speech. The burden of a three-minute elevator speech is merely to intrigue the listener enough to get them to want to set up the next appointment time. And the, and the goal is, what is your intention? So if you're selling yourself on a job interview or you're selling a product or a service or a philosophy or an idea, you're trying to present yourself and your ideas in a way that's attractive to people and inspires them to want to hear more. You'll find that her approach is fresh, real world, and her style is fun, sassy, and practical. Get ready to take notes as her programs are loaded with street-worthy ideas, methods, and tips that you can use immediately to get results. Please welcome Terry Shodine. Every single persuasive argument always has to focus on the emphasis of need. Why do they need you? Now, the typical sales presentation that we see will start with something like this. Uh, top three arguments. We hope that you'll consider working with us because we really care. We've been doing this for 25 years. We have excellent customer service. We have an incredible suite of products we can make available to you. We are here for the long term, and we genuinely, genuinely care about our clients. Now, this sounds like a very reasonable list of things that you would sell in a presentation, but it's not compelling. It doesn't move people towards action. I want you to leave this section thinking to yourself, wow, if I want went home and really reconstructed my case of my presentation, and I focused on what it is that, uh, that they truly need, not the talking points that I've traditionally been communicating, would that list look different? And the answer is yes. And if you can identify right up front what your top 10 most persuasive and compelling arguments are, then you'll have them at the ready. You're not always going to use all 10 arguments, but you're going to pick and choose the arguments that become most relevant for those individuals at the appropriate time and space. When it really became apparent to me how radically different things were for us as presenters was when I started to assess the differences in the generations in terms of how they hear our messaging. Now, when I really understood how vastly different it was going to be for us to present to each of these generations was when I went to a concert. Now, two big screens come down, big elaborate staging. She starts singing. They're singing with her, but now she starts dancing. And they're dancing. They know all the moves. They are dancing with her. And they're singing and they're dancing, but now there's these text messages that are going across the screen. She's texting them, and they're interactive text messages, which means that you can interact and respond. So they're texting and they're dancing and they're singing and they're spinning. And I'm watching all of this, and I'm thinking, oh, dear Lord, how will we ever sell them using PowerPoint? body language and gesturing. Can you give us any tips about actually presenting? Like, what do you see out in the field? So what I'd like to do for you at this point is just reenact for you some of the strange and incredible things we've caught some of your fellow professionals doing on videotape. They begin to do what we call the chicken because their arms are just kind of flapping back and forth. Now, if their collar is a little tight or their shirt is a little tight, it will give a complete rooster effect when you're watching the playback on the tape. They play with their keys and fiddle with their change. After a while, you're kind of wondering just what the heck it is they're doing down there. We have other people who are scared to death to gesture, so they want to keep their arms locked behind their back. And then it looks like they're struggling to get away. Uh, or they want to keep their arms locked at their sides, so they gesture from here and they do what we call the penguin. And then, of course, there's the ever-popular fig leaf. And sometimes the fig leaf gets exposed, which is weird. So it's just something to think about. But my absolute favorite came from a colleague of ours. His name was Ed Riley. There was a gentleman in his group that would get so nervous he would play with the buttons on his shirt. And in the course of his presentation, he had unbuttoned his shirt and then buttoned it back up again. And then he unbuttoned his shirt and he buttoned it back up again. We had no idea if he was coming or going. Our team welcomes the opportunity to learn more about the meeting or event you're planning. Let's schedule a next.